Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to Hot Topics, where today we are going to take a look at the five solas of the Reformation. Sola, we get our English word solo or alone, right? So basically, about 500 years ago, the Word of God was rediscovered. The Word of God, for about a thousand-year period, had been pretty much put in darkness. The Catholic Church had declared that sola ecclesia, the church alone, has the power, the authority to interpret the scriptures for the people. The church alone has the power to help get people to heaven. The church alone has the power to forgive, to um, uh, um, guide, to control people's lives. And this went on, as I said, for about a thousand year period from around 500 AD to about 1500 AD. And then God in his grace raised up some incredible godly people, men and women as well, who were willing to give their lives for these five solas. Well, wait a second, where do they come up with these five solas? When the Bible was taken out of darkness and brought out into the light. In fact, the famous phrase of the Reformation, post tenebras lux, post after tenebras darkness looks light. After 1,000 years of darkness, God's word being taken away and, and hidden. After darkness, boom, the light of God's truth. And it was then during the Reformation that these five solas became really the, um, the foundation, the battle cry of the Reformation. Five solas. And I'm not going to do them in any particular order, but in an order it makes sense in my mind. <laughs> Sola Scriptura, the Bible alone. Sola Gratia, grace alone. Sola Fide, faith alone. Solus Christus, Christ alone. Soli Deo Gloria, the glory to God alone. The reformers believed that God's word and God's word alone, sola scriptura, was the authority in the church. Not that the church was the authority over God's word. God's word alone, sola scriptura. God's word, God's voice through God's word is to be heard in God's church. God's word alone. Not the opinion of the priest, not the opinion of the pastor, not the opinion of the pope, not the opinion of some church council. God's word alone is the authority in God's church and for God's people. Sola Scriptura, uh, by the way, a solo that uh, today the Roman Catholic Church and the Orthodox Church deny. They deny this. As, they didn't just start denying it. This has been a denial they've had for years and years. Sola Scriptura is our full and final authority, right? We believe that all Scripture is inspired by God. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. That's why we believe that God's word is our full and final authority. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness so that the man of God, and yes, the woman of God, may be adequate, equipped for every good work. The reformers said that the Bible alone, apart from 
the Pope, apart from any human council or church council, the Bible alone, sola scriptura, is our authority. Well, again, this was radical for back then because, as I said, the Roman Catholic Church said, no, 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 sola ecclesia, the church alone, <laughs> right? Well, Martin Luther got in so much trouble for this solo, and the other reformers did as well. <laughs> uh, Martin Luther uh, was uh, really a, a papal bull, was issued against Martin Luther in 1520. A papal bull, basically, the Pope said, um, you better recant everything you're saying, everything you're writing, everything you're preaching. If you don't, watch out. And there in 1521, Martin Luther, the Diet of Worms, uh, basically outnumbered, intimidated because of all the Roman Catholic Church bigwigs there. When he was given the opportunity to recant everything he taught, including Sola Scriptura, Martin Luther made his famous statement. My conscience is bound by the word of God. I cannot nor will not recant. Here I stand. God, help me. The Reformation exploded. Remember at that time, God in his infinite wisdom and his sovereign grace had provided an invention called the Gutenberg printing press. A little before Martin Luther and the other great reformers and uh, that printing press was used in a big way as the teachings of great men like Martin Luther and John Calvin and other great reformers just spread throughout Europe like wildfire. And the Bible started to be translated in the language of the people so they could understand the Bible, so they could read the Bible. Because sola number one and again, not in any particular order, but in my order. Sola number one is sola scriptura. It's kind of the foundation of everything, right? Now, let me just say on a side note, you know, Martin Luther and John Calvin, they, they get a lot of credit as being the great reformers, and certainly should. But there were men that were, that were commonly referred to as the pre-reformers, men like Jan Hus, men who 100 years earlier we're saying the same thing. But these were men who ended up getting burned at the stake for having the audacity to say that God's word is the full and final authority as compared to the church or the pope. So solo number one is sola scriptura. That's our foundation, right? Everything's built on that. It leads to solo number two, sola gratia. Salvation is by grace alone. Apart from good works, good efforts, including church sacramental rituals. Salvation is by grace alone. Salvation is by grace alone. It is sovereign grace. God's choice, not man's free will. Ephesians chapter 2, very clear. Uh, we come into this world dead to God. We come into this world deceived by the Satan. We come into this world and we are disobedient to God and we are children of wrath. Damned, but God, verse 4, being rich in mercy because of his great love, which he loved us even when we were dead Spiritually dead, spiritually separated from God in our transgressions, he made us alive together with Christ, for by grace you've been saved. Verses 8 and 9, for by grace you've been saved through faith. This is not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Not as a result of work, so that no one may boast. There was a, an opponent of Martin Luther during you know, the time of the Reformation, a gentleman by the name of Erasmus, very, very intelligent man, and he basically wrote some writings where he said that 
um, man's will is free. Man's will is free to choose God or to reject God. Well, Martin Luther wrote a counter-writing to Erasmus's writing that man's will is free. He says, nah, he wrote the bondage of the will. Uh, man's will is free in terms of the material or the physical realm. We come into this world physically alive, but we're spiritually disconnected, dead to God. Why? Because we have a sin nature. Well, because of that, we can exercise our will in the realm we're alive in, the physical realm, right? We can choose what food we're going to eat, not eat. We can choose to stop at a red light or not stop at a red light. But when it comes to the realm of God, the spiritual realm, because we're dead to God, our free will will not choose God, cannot choose God. We will only choose that in, which, in, in, in the realm which we're alive in. I mean, perfect example, um, I just was doing a, a series, five-week series of Jesus rejected in Nazareth. Luke chapter 4, right? And there's Jesus, right? Perfect preacher, <laughs> perfect God man. He is preaching in his hometown synagogue where he had grown up for 30 years, the hometown synagogue of Nazareth, right? We believe it was the first time Jesus actually was preaching in his hometown synagogue, right? His fame had preceded him. He had already done miracles from Cana all the way back up to Cana. He's now in Nazareth. He's going to preach. He preaches, obviously, the best sermon anybody ever heard, right? <laughs> I mean, the perfect God-man preaching God's truth. And by the way, in that sermon, Jesus says, uh, I am the promised Messiah. You know, the one that was prophesied in the book of Isaiah, especially Isaiah 61. You know how the people responded? Well, at first, they, their first reaction was, wow, we've never heard something like this. These words, his gracious words. Well, of course, he didn't make a mistake. He didn't need to read commentaries like I do. He didn't need to stop. He's the perfect God, man. So he, 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 it says that they were astonished. They were in awe, famazo. Uh, they, they couldn't believe what they heard. And they were in awe of his words of grace. And then you know what ended up happening? They go, wait a second. You're just Joseph's son, the carpenter's boy. Who are you to tell us that we need you to save our souls? Well, as you continue to read the passage of the text there, you know what eventually happened? They um, dragged Jesus out of the synagogue, drove him to the top of the hill, and tried to throw him off the cliff. You mean to tell me if man has the ability to choose God... If there was an ever an opportunity to choose God, I mean, God in the flesh right in front of them, if there was ever an opportunity to say, you know what? Yep, I choose Jesus. I think they would have done it then, right? But why didn't they? It says the entire synagogue tried to kill him. What does that tell you? When it comes to the spiritual realm, in terms of choosing God, man cannot choose God, will never choose God. There's your example right there. <laughs> they tried to kill him. That means that God is the one who makes the choice. That means God is the one in his sovereign grace who elects his people to salvation. God the Son, Jesus Christ, is the one in his sovereign grace who redeems his sheep, those who are elected. And it's God the Holy Spirit in his sovereign grace who regenerates you, makes you alive even though you're dead in your sins and trespasses, gives you the gift of faith to be able to repent of your sins and put your full faith and trust in Christ alone. It is all of sovereign grace. That's why God gets all the glory. Well, that's what Martin Luther preached. The Reformers didn't just preach sola scriptura. That's the foundation. They preach sola gratia. You're saved by grace alone, not based on any human will or desire. And we'll take a look at the next three solas after the break. Welcome back, everybody, to Hot Topics, where today we are taking a look at the five solas of the Reformation. Basically, these five solas were the battle cry um, of the Reformation. These five solas spread throughout Europe like wildfire. And that's because God's word had been recovered, rediscovered, post tenebras looks 
after darkness, the darkness, the Catholic Church had the Bible in for 1,000 years. Or the Catholic Church said, no, 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 it's not sola scriptura, sola God, it's, it, it's sola ecclesia. We, the church, and the church alone, have the power and authority to tell you what to believe, how to believe, and how you need to act, and to get you to heaven. Well, the reformers, by God's grace, rediscovered God's truth. And when they discovered God's truth, post tenebras, after darkness, Luke's light. And the truth of God that the first sola, sola scriptura, because all scripture is inspired by God, that means that all scripture is the authoritative word of God. And therefore, we as humans, including the church, we submit to the word of God. We are not over and above the word of God. That was solo number one, solo scriptura. That's kind of like the foundation of the house. And right before we went to break, we took a look at the second solo, solo gratia. Salvation is by grace alone. Apart from man making the choice or man's desire or effort. It is completely a gift of God. It is God's sovereign grace. God who elects his people Christ who redeems his people, God the Holy Spirit who regenerates his people. We as humans, our will, our free will in the spiritual realm is in bondage. We cannot choose God. We will not choose God because we are dead to God. God in his grace has to first make you alive, give you the gift of faith to be able to repent of your sins and then confess to Jesus as Lord and to believe in your heart uh, that God raised him from the dead and you're saved, right? So we have the foundation sola scriptura which allows us to understand kind of uh, the parts of the roof first one is sola gratia salvation is by grace alone which leads to the third sola and again i'm not going in any particular order i'm just kind of making this little house image for us we have the foundation sola scriptura because really you can't know the other solas unless you first know the scriptures right so once the scriptures were rediscovered, and once these great men started to read the scriptures, it's like, well, naturally, sola gratia, because that's what the Bible says, you're saved by grace alone. You're saved by grace alone, sola gratia, sola fide, by faith alone. You see, apart from good works. You see, the Catholic Church said, you're saved by faith and your good works. The reformer said, you are saved by faith alone. No and, alone. Salvation is by grace alone. It's God's sovereign choice. Humans will never choose for God unless God in his grace first makes them alive. So you're saved by grace alone through Faith alone, apart from your efforts or good works. In fact, in Romans chapter 1, a, a, a text that the great reformer Martin Luther was reading one day, and suddenly the Lord just opened his eyes to more and more truth, and Martin Luther read Romans 1, verses 16 and 17, where the apostle Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and then to the Greek. And here it is. For in the gospel, the righteousness from God is revealed. How? From faith to faith. As it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. Boom. For Martin Luther, this was radical. Righteousness not based upon that which we do or obtain, based on our efforts, it is a righteousness from God based, that is credited to our account, that is based on the works that Christ did and fulfilling all righteousness for us as the perfect God-man and then going to the cross and being punished for our unrighteousness. Dying the death reserve, rising three days later, overcoming sin and death for us, you are saved by sola gratia, grace alone, through faith alone alone it's not faith and works it's faith alone in fact in, in ephesians when it says you're saved by grace and 
through faith, and this is a gift of God, both the grace and the faith is a gift. Again, God in his grace elects his people. Christ in his grace redeems his people. The Holy Spirit in his grace regenerates people, makes them alive in the spiritual realm, and gives them the gift of faith to be able, as people now alive in God's realm, to repent of their sins and to put their full faith and trust in Christ alone. Sola Scriptura, that's the foundation of the building that allows you to understand sola gratia, salvation is by grace alone. That allows you to understand sola fide, through faith alone. And then our fourth sola, solus Christus, in Christ alone. Again, sola scriptura. Once the Bible was rediscovered, post Tenebras looks, suddenly the reformers like, wait a second. Salvation, the Bible says, is by grace alone. Through faith alone, listen, in Christ alone, apart from the church, apart from the sacraments, apart from the priesthood. The Roman Catholic Church back then, and even today, has seven sacraments. Basically, steps that a person needs to take throughout his or her lifetime as a Catholic to be able to hopefully gain righteousness, be righteous in God's sight. So it's really righteousness from yourself, as opposed to what Scripture says, a righteousness from God, right? Well, the seven sacraments in the Catholic Church, you have um, sacrament of baptism, which basically, Catholic Church says, kind of opens the door for the rest of the sacraments for you to start trying to gain and maintain your righteousness. So you have the sacrament of baptism, you have the sacrament of uh, First Holy Communion, you have the sacrament of um, um, confirmation, uh, you have the uh, sacrament of um, mass, where you're constantly told you need to go to mass. Many people even go every day. Uh, you have the sacrament of um, um, confessing your sins to the priest, right? You also have the sacrament of marriage, number six. And then finally, you have the sacrament of um, uh, kind of like last rites before you die, you know, where the priest can perform the sacrament and, you know, I'm not sure you're going to get to heaven, but maybe that'll get you to purgatory, take some years off it and so forth, okay? Well, the reformer said, no, 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 no. Salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. It's not Christ and the priesthood. It's not Christ and the sacraments. It's not Christ and the church, it's Christ alone. And in fact, in Hebrews chapter 10, I mean, my goodness, we see that so clearly where the writer of Hebrews really gives us a great analogy of human priests who are constantly standing and serving, offering sacrifices versus Christ, the great high priest who is sitting. Why? Because the job's done. We see um, in Hebrews 10, starting in verse 11, the writer of Hebrews says, every priest stands daily. Why? Well, he's ministering and offering time after time the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But he, Christ, the perfect high priest, the exalted high priest seated at the right hand of the Father, now having offered one sacrifice for sins for all time, sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time onward until his enemies be made a footstool for his feet. For by one offering, he, Christ, has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. Verse 18, now where there is forgiveness of these things, sins, there's no longer any offering for sin. Christ is the exalted high priest, seated at the right hand of the Father. Salvation is in Christ alone, right? So the so reformers, again, sola scriptura is the foundation of the house, right? which then allows us to understand the three pillars. Salvation is by grace alone, sola gratia, through faith alone, sola fide, in Christ alone, solus Christus. You see it? So you've got the foundation, you've got the three pillars. And the roof, fifth sola, soli deo gloria. 
the glory to God alone, apart from any human self-glorification. You see, God and God alone deserves all credit and all glory for everything, right? For creating this universe, for sustaining this universe, for ruling this universe, for when he will consummate everything. God and God alone deserves all glory for our salvation. God and God alone deserves all glory for graciously giving us his written revelation. God and God alone deserves all glory. And again, the reformers were men who got this. No, 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 it's not God and the church that deserves glory. It's not God and the Pope. It's not God and the priesthood. It's soli Deo Gloria, God alone, right? And again, in a great verse here, is Romans chapter 11, where the apostle Paul, just an incredible doxology here, a praise to God. He says, um, verses 33 through 36, oh, the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and unfathomable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who became his counselor? Well, the answer is no one. Or who has first given to him that it might be paid back to him again? Well, the answer is no one. Verse 36, for from him, God, and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory. And so the five solas of the Reformation were five solas, truth from the scriptures, that went completely counter to what humans had been doing for a thousand years in the name of religion. It was no longer that the church alone has the power and authority, right? No, the church needs to submit to God's authority, sola scriptura. So you get the foundation of the house. Your three pillars, which can only be discovered in the scriptures, is that salvation is by God's grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Apart from any human will, apart from any good works, and apart from any human institution, including religious sacraments. And therefore, the fifth sola, the roof that shines out, soli dea gloria, to God be the glory alone. Guys, you have to understand something. These five solas, as Dr. John MacArthur likes to say, uh, well, they've sailed down to us on a sea of blood. Do, do, do you know how many people were burned at the stake for having the audacity to say that, no, no, the Bible alone is our authority, not, not the church, not the pope. The salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, and Christ alone. No, 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 we don't need religious sacraments and church and this and that. No, or priesthood. No, Christ is the high priest. And the God and God alone gets all the glory. You know how many people were killed because they had the audacity to stand on those five souls? How'd they get the courage? <laughs> the first soul, full of scriptura. That which had been hidden in darkness for a thousand years was brought out into the light. And when these men and women discovered God's truth, wow, the light of truth spread. And people were so convinced and so convicted of God's truth, they were willing to stand on God's truth no matter the cost, including being burned at the stake. My hope and prayer for all of us is that we too would take these five solas as seriously, these great reformers did. Because let's face it, nothing's changed. If we get rid of Sola Scriptura, the house comes crashing down. And what ends up happening is this. We have our own man-made invention of salvation and man that gets all the glory. No, 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 we're not going to be that, those type of people. We stand firmly on Sola Scriptura, Sola Gratia, Sola Fide, Sola Christ, that's Soli Deo Gloria, to God be the glory alone. God bless you.